As the beloved Fallout video game franchise enters its television era, now seems as good a moment as any to explore the timeline of the world of Fallout, as there is quite a bit of lore out there. The timeline for Fallout is grand and intricate as we find ourselves presented with a world of what if. Set in a universe that diverged from our own, Fallout's history still shares many historical landmark events and milestones as ours prior to the events of World War II. While Fallout takes place in the future after nuclear attacks more or less destroyed the world, this dystopian setting presents a traditional 1950s-style world of tomorrow. This world spans over eight full role-playing titles of the series, as well as a squad-based spin-off, an action RPG dungeon crawler, and a simulation game called Fallout Shelter. Now let's get into the timeline of Fallout's history. Fallout's lore chronologically begins centuries before you exit your first vault, a survival shelter purportedly designed to protect the U.S. population from nuclear attacks. While Fallout's history shares much in common with actual U.S. history, the fictional Cabot family and their influence on Boston in the 18th century is one example of the differences Fallout's history poses. The timeline also diverges when it comes to World War II, as alternate forms of technology, specifically in nuclear physics, are sought after and developed. Through mastering nuclear fission and at last nuclear fusion, extensive amounts of power are generated, revolutionizing energy. While these leaps and bounds in technology are accomplished, mediums such as radio and television remain in the 1950s style despite being nuclear powered. As nuclear energy powers this universe and all its everyday necessities, including cars, large private companies working in science and technology are abundant with many becoming independent defense contractors for the US government. Vault Tech, Robco Industries, and Repcon Aerospace are three of these defense contractors, with Vault Tech developing vaults to, again, purportedly protect the US population. Robco, headed by Mr. House prior to the war, specializes in just about all of the robots with which we interact and is also responsible for Stealth Boys, wrist-mounted devices that use light refraction to create stealth. Meanwhile, Repcon Aerospace largely developed rockets and was contracted by the government to establish new fuel sources such as nuclear fission. Fossil fuels also contribute to power generation, but much like your uranium-dependent nuclear power, they are a finite resource. This lack of resources culminates with the world's two largest superpowers, the United States and China, engaging in the resource wars beginning in April 2052. The Anchorage Reclamation Simulation, a virtual recreation created for the U.S. Army, is our source for what life was like during this time, and shows U.S. soldiers freeing Alaska from Chinese occupation. This occupation had been ongoing since 2066, when the Sino-American War began. The U.S.'s paranoia of the potential impact of communism created by the power of China mimics our own 1950s history with the Second Red Scare, where it was believed communism was constantly lurking. In Fallout's timeline and as depicted in the DLC of Fallout 3, these concerns prove to be just, as spies aim to undermine America and Chinese submarines are stationed around the coast. This community's survival creates Little Lamplight, a pre-war underground cavern tourist attraction turned into a settlement in the capital wasteland in 2277. Meanwhile, in its beginning, Fallout 4 explores the process of surviving the Great War via vault as the sole survivor goes below the Commonwealth to be cryogenically frozen along with their spouse and baby. At the same time, the city of Las Vegas is unharmed as Mr. House's superior technology provides his protection, yet recovery remains long away. The earliest we visit in the Fallout timeline is 2102, when Fallout 76 begins. Named after the signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1776, Vault 76 opens 25 years after the war. Though vault had been using the majority of their vaults for human experimentation, Vault 76 was one of the control vaults, so it was devoid of any of the contractor's potential malevolence. While 76's setting of Appalachia provides more pleasantry and charm than Fallout's other settings, large mutated bats called Scorch Beasts have unfortunately ravaged the land and leave behind infected humans called the Scorch. Aside from the ever-growing world and duties of MMOs, 76 tasks its players mainly with ridding Appalachia of Scorch Beasts and the Scorch, a problem that's resolved after dropping a nuclear bomb. In 76, we see the earliest iteration of the Brotherhood of Steel, despite being established in 2076 before the Great War. Outside of Fallout 76's time frame, Fallout's main story begins in 2161 in California. Almost 100 years after the Great War and its world destruction, we play as the Vault Dweller in Fallout, a post-nuclear role-playing game. As the Vault Dweller, we have been chosen to leave Vault 13, another rare safe control vault from vault Tech. Tasked with obtaining water chips to operate the water purifier for the vault's survival, we ascend from Vault 13 to Shady Sands in the Wasteland, where this small town, founded by Vault 15 dwellers, has learned to grow fresh crops. A social experiment gone wrong, Vault 15 consists of those chosen for their varying array of political beliefs, and, as a result, has come into conflict. Due to Vault 15's conflict, a group descends, stealing the Vault's Gek as they leave. 
This is a Garden of Eden creation kit, an essential piece of pre-war technology that makes the wasteland habitable through terraforming. In Shady Sands, this initial Fallout game shows us the birth of the NCR, the New California Republic, which is officially founded years later in 2189. Back to the 2160s, a group called the Unity, led by a mutant named the Master, begins to grow. This cult aims to turn every human into a super mutant, which are large green monsters. The Master intends to enact his devious plans by using the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV, to transform humanity. Similar to the Gek, the FEV is a constant in the timeline of Fallout. In our journey across the wasteland for water chips, we as the Vault Dweller come into conflict with the Master and must prove that his efforts of transforming humans are for naught, as his super mutants are in fact sterile. Unable to reproduce, the Master's mutant society is doomed, and upon realization, the Master sets the Unity's base to explode, forcing the cult members, also known as the Master's army, to separate. Fallout 1 resolves with the Vault Dweller returning with requested water chips, only to be exiled by the Overseer as a means to prevent other Vault 13 members from being encouraged to leave as well. Following Fallout 1's time frame, we have the oddly named spin-offs Fallout Tactics Brotherhood of Steel and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. In 2197, we follow the Brotherhood campaign in the Midwest, search for the the highly desired Vault Zero and its technology. Strifes with mutant encounters once again ensue, along with a baddie named the Calculator. In line with the Master, the Calculator is a supercomputer monstrosity powered by real human brains. Ultimately, the Brotherhood attains powerful world-ending technology and leaves us pondering their use of this power. Eleven years later, in 2208, we follow a new Brotherhood initiate in Fallout Brotherhood of Steel and battle more mutants modeling themselves after the Master. Jumping forward to 2241, we begin in Fallout 2 in Arroyo playing as the Chosen One, the grandchild of the Vault Dweller from Fallout 1. After the Vault Dweller was exiled from Vault 13 to keep from potentially influencing others to leave, they, along with a small group of others who have left, grow to establish Arroyo in Northern California in 2167. Hit with a severe drought, Arroyo's only hope for survival is another Gek. Determined to find a Gek, the Chosen One heads out in search and encounters a group known as the Enclave. We discover the Enclave is a parapolitical organization formed by high-profile government officials who escaped annihilation in secret prior to the war. Lying in wait for over 150 years, the Enclave has been conducting plans for the FEV on an offshore oil rig. The Enclave aims to make the FEV not only airborne, but lethal enough to kill each and every person infected with it in the wasteland. Once all are dead, the Enclave plans to re-inhabit the land and rebuild America to their specifications. The Chosen One acquires a Gek for Arroyo's drought, but its whole population has been selected and kidnapped by the Enclave to be test subjects for their modified FEV. The Chosen One then detonates a nuclear reactor on the Enclave's oil rig, using the Gek to transform Arroyo into a powerful force. It is around this time that the NCR, New California Republic, has been founded and begun to evolve Shady Sands into one of the most highly advanced cities in the Wasteland. In Fallout 3, we move a few decades later to 2227 in Capital Wasteland, the ruins of Washington, D.C. Fallout 3 serves as one of the flagships of the Fallout series, as it was much of the fanbase's introduction to its universe. In Fallout 3, our main character, known as the Lone Wanderer, is a dweller from Vault 101, born in 2258. Later in life, the Lone Wanderer's father, James, voiced by Liam Neeson, plans to escape the vault, which has been directed by Vault Tech to never open its doors. Seeking to follow his father's escape, the Lone Wanderer finds himself forcefully expelled from the vault. We then begin our journey, searching for James, and eventually discover that the Lone Wanderer's mother died at childbirth, and both James and the Wanderer were allowed into Vault 101 after the Wanderer's birth outside of the vault. We continue to discover that the Lone Wanderer's parents were working on Project Purity, a water purification project in the form of a high-tech installation built around the Jefferson Memorial. As the project needs a Gek to function, James has gone out in search. The Lone Wanderer finds James in Vault 112, trapped in a simulation called Tranquility Lane. This simulation is being controlled by the creator of the Gek, Stanislaus Braun, although Vault 112 lacks one. The Lone Wanderer then breaks his father free of the simulation. Once free, James James calls upon fellow Purity Project scientists in Rivet City to return to Jefferson City to get the project back online. Despite their base's explosive destruction in Fallout 2, many of the Enclave have actually survived. And led by Colonel Augustus Autumn, they disrupt James's and the scientists' plan and demand everything be turned over to them. To prevent Colonel Autumn from activating the purifier, James seals himself inside and activates a radiation leak, dying in the process. The Wanderer and other scientists fight the Enclave and escape to the Citadel, which are the ruins of the Pentagon occupied by the Brotherhood of Steel. However, these members of the Brotherhood of Steel have gone against the original mission of hoarding technology in hopes of helping the people of the Wasteland to rebuild. This faction is known as the Brotherhood Outcasts. With the aid of the Brotherhood, the Wanderer learns that Vault 87 still holds its Gek, which is the only one in the Capital Wasteland. Journeying to Vault 87 can happen one of two ways. 
aggressively using plenty of anti-rad aids, or through back tunnels of Little Lamplight, which is run by children. After gaining entry to Vault 87 and acquiring the Gek, the Enclave interferes and takes possession. The Lone Wanderer awakens in Raven Rock, the Enclave's base, and heads to John Henry Eden, the United States president, who has extended an invitation. The Enclave's modified FEV plan is then revealed, and Raven Rock is destroyed as the Wanderer escapes. The Brotherhood outcasts activate their gigantic robot, Liberty Prime, and reclaim Project Purity. At the end of Fallout 3, we as the Wanderer can choose to activate Project Purity ourselves, or send Sarah, one of the Brotherhood members, to do it, with whoever you choose dying in the process. A third option is later introduced in DLC, where we can send a super mutant companion to activate Project Purity as they are immune to the radiation. In this DLC, we venture further as the Lone Wanderer, eventually returning to Pittsburgh as seen earlier in Fallout 76. In Fallout New Vegas, we head back west to the NCR, which has become a powerful force in the Wasteland. Caesar's Legion, also known as the Legion, is a faction that operates in the style of ancient Rome and opposes the NCR. By means of severity, including crucifixions, the Legion claims peace and order. These two groups fight for power over Vegas and the Hoover Dam, which is still controlled by, just a reminder, Robco's Mr. House. Vegas has returned to much of its pre-war behavior and vices, now with casinos run by the three families, the Chairman, the Omertas, and the White Glove Society. These families began as wasteland groups in which Mr. House saw value and gave control of the Tops, the Ultralux, and Gamora, while he maintained control of the Lucky 38. In 2281, we begin as Courier 6, who is shot and buried in a shallow grave in Good Springs. With no memory, Courier 6 aims to hunt down the person who shot them and tracks the shooter down to Vegas. The shooter is a man named Benny, the leader of the chairman who runs the Topps Casino. This was in order to attain the Platinum Chip, which Courier 6 was entrusted to deliver to Lucky 38. The Platinum Chip, which looks like a casino chip, is actually a computer chip that contains upgrades to robots called Securitrons, which patrol the city and keep the city and Mr. House safe from the NCR and the Legion. There are four routes you can take. Help the NCR attain the chip and take Vegas for California, help the Legion and undermine the NCR, surrender all control to Mr. House, or rise up in Benny's place to create an independent Vegas. Which ending is canon is yet to be established in the upcoming television series. In Fallout 4, we see the lone survivor, decades after being cryogenically frozen underneath the Commonwealth, wake from their frozen state just as their son, Sean, is torn from their spouse's arms. Fighting to hold onto their baby, the spouse is shot dead by cutthroat mercenaries and left in their frozen chamber. The sole survivor is then frozen again, not waking again until 2287, which takes place six years after New Vegas. The sole survivor then leaves Vault 111 to track down their son, winding up in Diamond City straight away, which is a settlement that exists in the ruins of Fenway Park in Boston. We learn about the Institute, a group that seeks to replace the Commonwealth population with synthetic humanoids called synths. The sole survivor then discovers that the Institute is run by their unexpectedly older son, Sean, as 60 years have actually passed. The Institute is one of four main factions in Fallout 4, along with the Railroad, the Minutemen, and the Brotherhood of Steel. There are four routes that we as the sole survivor can then take. If we side with Sean and the Institute, we agree to destroy the current human population by replacing them with pure, non-irradiated people and take the Commonwealth. Siding with the Brotherhood of Steel means agreeing to destroy synths, mutants, and everything non-human. Meanwhile, siding with the Railroad, which consists of sentient synths seeking freedom, we'll see the sole survivor agreeing to destroy the Institute and the Brotherhood as they threaten that very freedom. Lastly, siding with the Minutemen means agreeing to protect the people of the Commonwealth. While the Railroad cares little of humankind, both the Minutemen and the Railroad can coexist. While it is unknown again which ending is canon in the Fallout universe, we may also discover that in the television series, but more likely in the next Fallout game. That brings us all to 2296, which is the current day in the Fallout timeline and nine years after the end to Fallout 4, and where we find ourselves at the start of the highly anticipated Fallout series on Prime Video. Set in the ruins of Los Angeles, we see the Vault Dweller emerge from Vault 33, previously the Boneyard in Fallout 1. This vault is a demonstration vault built by vault Tech and is where the Master originally devised plans to build his army, marking it close to Shady Sands, the now capital of the New California Republic. Can you tell me what's happened in the last 200 years? While Fallout's television creators tout that this show won't build too much on the Fallout lore, it is interestingly set in Los Angeles. You're an actual vault dweller. I am. This has been the complete Fallout timeline leading up to the Fallout series. What elements of the Fallout video games do you think Amazon series can't live without? Sound off in the comments below and be sure to let us know if you think the series measures up to its video game predecessors.